Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get extra clarity and excitement from a mix using sidechain compression. Sidechaining is a process where one track is affected by the input of another track. The most common use is with compression. You can have a compressor reduce the volume of an instrument based on information from a different source. It's a really cool way to automate your mixing, which is something that I'm a huge fan of. So let's get into a few examples and you'll see just how it works. The first example is the most common. Bass frequencies can make or break your mix, so they've gotta be clean. Getting a bass guitar and kick drum to sound powerful means having enough low end, but if they're both going at full volume, it's gonna be a mess. Check out this track. The kick and bass sound pretty awesome on their own, but step all over each other in the mix. I'm going to use sidechain compression to clean this up. Start with a compressor on the bass track. You can use any multiband compressor that allows sidechaining. As a general rule, I try to keep my compressors on whatever the sustained signal is. Each bass note rings out longer than the fast kick transient, so it makes more sense to reduce that. I only want to compress the low end here, so we're going to set the compression frequency range to everything under 100 Hz. Now select the key source. Since I want the bass track to duck every time there's a kick hit, I'm going to set the kick as the key track. Now watch how the bass compressor reacts every time the kick hits. Great, the low end is cleaner and the bass gets out of the way of the short kick transients. You can even take this a step further by reading from a MIDI track of the kick. That way the reduction happens instantly on each kick instead of relying on the algorithm to pick the timing correctly. If you don't have a MIDI track and your DAW can't create key spikes, there's still one more way to get a super accurate response. Duplicate your kick and make a pre-fader send to the sidechain bus. If you've been following this video in your session, make sure to delete any sidechain processing that you have on the original kick. Filter out all the low end on the sidechain kick track. And zero out the sidechain kick fader so it doesn't mess with the mix. Now go to the compressor on the bass track and set it to read the high frequency information on the kick. Awesome. Now each time that the filtered kick hits, the low end from the bass will duck. This is a great way to get a super accurate sidechain since the timing of the kick's high end transient will be more exact than the sub frequencies. Just make sure that the release is set high enough so that the reduction lasts for the entire kick hit. By now, it's common knowledge that the impact of a snare drum usually comes from the 200 Hz region. The problem is that this is also where a lot of the low end on a rhythm guitar lives, and just reducing 200 Hz on the guitar track is going to make it sound weak, but sidechaining them together will get the impact needed without sacrificing the power. Just like before, I'm going to load the compressor on the sustained signal, which is in this case the guitar. Set the compressor from 100 to 300 Hz and have it listen to the snare track. The goal here is to get enough compression that you feel the snare. You don't really notice the reduction on the guitars. Awesome, that's perfect. The attack and release times are super important on this stuff, so make sure you've got it set intelligently. You'll know it's set right when the entire snare hit is heard, but the guitars don't sound like they're going in and out. If you're having trouble getting your vocal to stand out, it could be because the guitars are masking it. Let's set up another sidechain on our guitars and set it to read information from the vocal. Vocal intelligibility tends to come from the 1000 to 3000 Hz range, so let's set that as the compression range on our guitar. Now just like the snare, I didn't want to notice the dip in the guitars. Let's find a subtle amount of compression that lets us hear the vocals clearly, but doesn't interrupt the guitar sound.
awesome. Those vocals are cutting through the mix, and the guitars still have a good amount of presence. This last one's a cool one that requires pretty specific routing. I'm going to start by making a sub drop with Sub Destroyer. I'm going to use the trigger mode so that I only have to set one key spike and then let the plugin take care of the rest. It's super easy to get a sound with this plugin. Just automate a trigger point where you want the sub to drop. The start and end frequency knobs let me pick exactly what range I want the sub to drop through. Cool. Now I'm going to set the length. This knob lets me control exactly how long it takes to get from the start to end frequency. Awesome. Just for texture, I'm going to add a little drive on the output section. That sounds huge, but it's starting to distort the low end of the mix. To fix this, I'm going to set a sidechain between the sub and the entire mix. Just send all the instruments to an instrumental bus. I leave the vocals, leads, and any other special effects out of this bus since they don't have any sub frequencies. Load a compressor on the instrumental bus with the key source being the bass drop. Now set the sidechain from the highest note of your sub drop and below. Since Sub Destroyer lets me choose the exact starting and ending frequency, I can set the frequency range of the compressor to be exactly what I need. When the sub drop hits, I want the low end to stay relatively close to where it was before. Set the compression to a point where the total volume of the low end only goes up a couple dB at the drop. Now set the attack and release so that the reduction only lasts as long as the sub drop. Yep, that's exactly what I'm looking for. The bass drop is huge and clean, and the low end of the instrumental is back right when it's finished. This is a pretty extreme effect, so make sure that you've got a good listening environment whenever you're doing sub-frequency automation like this. You'll know it's right when you don't notice that the low end of the instruments are going in and out. What are some interesting ways that you've used side chaining in a mix? Leave a comment below if you found some creative mix elements to tie together. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.